Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Horror 101. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And this time we are discussing Happy Death Day. Happy Death Day, all the party noises, clapping. Yes. So, um, for those of you who don't know, Happy Death Day is a 2017 uh, black comedy slasher. It's basically uh, Scream meets Groundhog Day. Uh, so this came out October 13th, 2017, uh, budgeted for $4.8 million and pulled in uh, $125.5 million at the box office. So it made a little bit of money. That turned out pretty good. Though, it's also a case of the marketing for it was also kind of decently within your face. Yeah, I feel like there was there was definitely some marketing on this. And, like, it's a fun movie. Not to spoil my, my thoughts of it, but I enjoyed this a lot. Hmm. So, um, what did you think of it, Dave? Because it seems like from our, our brief conversation prior, you weren't super into it. Well, it was a slight case of I knew of this movie's existence because of specific trailers, knowing of its sequel, and having a little bit of an understanding of the basic premise of the movie. But also a bit of a case of, hmm, around this time, they kind of had a tendency of essentially showing a good chunk of the movie within their trailer. Not enough to actually spoil much of anything, but still kind of a case of, hmm, it feels like I've kind of watched this already. But on whole, especially with running through the story as it did and the concepts that it touched upon, it was interesting to see. Yeah, I quite like this. I think the the scream meets um, Groundhog Day is like a really apt comparison. I think there's some good jokes in it, and I think it's not super scary. It is it is a PG thirteen horror movie, so like if you're going into this like wanting a lot of gore or anything, there's definitely not that in it. Mm -hmm. It's very tame in that sense, um, but I think it's I think it's a fun concept. And I think the twist at the end is really good. Because, uh, like, I, there's enough in the movie that you can figure it out. But I feel like the first time you see it, you probably wouldn't figure out who the killer is. Or, or mm. who's causing the loop, I should say. Right, and that's sort of case. No, it makes complete sense. Especially with all the stuff that goes on and how it goes about. The other particular thing is... I don't think the movie really kind of weighs in on either one of the movie concepts it kind of goes in with. It amazingly kind of has an interesting blend of both without being too strong in either end. Where the Groundhog Day concept of it is played with and messed around with, but it's not uh, Groundhog Day as a with a horror concept. It's taking that sort of idea and giving its own sort of spin to its story without being like, oh, let's just take this thing and uh, try to make up this idea. But nevertheless, it's kind of a marvelous idea of, ha ha, Hollywood has no idea how to write a new story. Um, I mean, like, I feel like it is, oh, like, it's definitely taking elements from uh, Groundhog Day and obviously from Scream, but I feel like it's original enough that I'm not complaining about it. Mm -hmm. I'm I like, think that was one of the nice balances that the movie managed to go with. Yeah, it does a good enough job, I think, of, of being at least fun enough and interesting enough that I'm like, I mean, yeah, it's kind of ripping off Groundhog Day, but I kind of don't care because I'm having a good time. Just trying to run through with the couple particular ideas it messes with because it goes through a decent idea of her mental concept of how everything's kind of running of being confused then terrified and then just throwing their heads up to be like well let's just go crazy with this yeah her character arc is a lot of fun I also like they, they put a little twist on the Groundhog Day formula where like Every time she gets killed um, and then repeats the day, she becomes, like, a little bit weaker or, like, 
she still has like scar tissue from like the previous injuries that like killed her and stuff indeed sort of giving a little bit more of a concept of there's effect to this in a certain way but it's also a case of it's not exactly infinite because after a certain point in time <laughs> you're not gonna make it out of this sweetie yeah no it definitely adds like a ticking clock to the to the story mm -hmm. yeah no i i quite enjoyed this i thought i think it's it's a fun spin on a horror movie and uh it's also funny. There's some good there's some good humor in it as well. It really is with all the stuff it goes through. And I think the only one other thought I kind of have was although knowing a little bit of the concept of the sequel and whatnot sort of makes me think how they decide to go with it. Uh again, not to say that we're going to be touching on this particular movie and hopefully not to spoil too much of it with the sequel they don't exactly go too far with the idea of continuing on with the groundhog idea, but what happens when you add multiple people into the scenario? So I've actually never seen the sequel. I've only seen this one, so I'm going to have to watch the the second one now, because I'm um, really interested in seeing it. No, nah, indeed. Along with the Nightmare on Elm Street sequels, this has been added onto the list. Yeah, unfortunately, there's only two of these. Allegedly, there's going to be a third, but it hasn't actually uh, come out yet, so... Yeah, whether or not there's any sort of real big push for it, or someone's kind of gotten the urge of, like, how long has it been since we've done that last Groundhog Day uh, horror movie sequel? A good couple of years? Okay, let's get the third one out there. I mean, the third one, I know it, like, didn't do as well at the box office, but on, like... It still made money, like, I, I you know, I, I feel like a good a new one would be fun, but that's just me. Uh, it's also, I don't know if you noticed this, but it's written by uh, Scott Lobdell. Does that name ring any bells to you? I'd be a little surprised if it did. Lobdell. Okay, so he's mostly known as a comic book writer. Like, he wrote for, like, Daredevil, uh, The Darkness, Alpha Flight, Nightwing. He's written a bunch of comics. Uh, this is one of the only movies he's done, though. Um, he did a, he did an episode of Godzilla, the, uh, the animated series, apparently. On you... the one hand, that doesn't surprise me. And weirdly enough, a weird mental flash comes to my mind of... Yeah, I remember watching that show when I was a child. I do too. I completely forgot it existed until I saw that. I'm like, oh wait, I remember that. Yeah, all the interesting animated shows that they decided to make at the time. Oh god, Evolution. Oh god. Oh, I totally forgot about that too. Oh but anywho, god. before we go diving off in that supposed direction of TV history. No... On the one hand, it was definitely interesting, but it's it's intriguing that this particular writer that's done especially stories with Daredevil and stuff like that did something like this. I could maybe see it with the suspense scenes and other stuff with there. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise. Yeah, he also wrote, a, uh, from what I remember, a really terrible uh, crime comedy movie called Man of the House, which starred Tommy Lee Jones, but I remember it being real bad. Yeah, just all those words in that particular sentence kind of reek. Hmm, this either seems to be a attempted cash grab and or just a random fling of money that somebody just did, did so tremendously wrong. Hmm. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look into I'm gonna have to watch the sequel at some point because this was this was fun. I enjoyed this. This was a fun little little horror comedy slasher deal hmm. would you agree dave did you did you have a good time with this one i very much i very much did enjoy the time with it again it's on the list for checking out the sequel to see how things decide to go but yeah see how it goes for this spooky season i also think that one of the other things of this movie that i really appreciate is it's like 95 minutes it doesn't overstay its welcome definitely true it gets so, in it does its thing and it, it gets out and leaves you wanting more it's definitely true though 
the only examples that I can kind of put in that were sort of over bloated in most cases were kind of the bigger ones and the particular ones around that time to kind of fill up uh, stock with it. In most cases, films nowadays still try and do a decent job of sticking within that time frame. Oh, I feel like movies now are far too long. Like, I feel like you never get a nine, like a, a good old fashioned 90 minute film. But maybe that's just my bias. Maybe. Anyway. Something that you can just watch in an afternoon instead of spending a good either half of your day and or most of your evening to actually watch. Exactly. I love that. I love that hard 90. Anyway, uh, so for our next episode, we're going to be going into something a little different. Again, I'm trying to remember your list, but I can't remember which one is specifically up next. Well, I'm going to give you some hints, Dave. Uh, we're going back to 2004, so this would have been a big movie when we were end of middle school, early high school, somewhere around there. Um, it's a remake of a Japanese film. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I got it. Now it's the case of whether or not I get this confused with the other movie or supposedly how much homework I'd have to do with actually watching the other movies to get anything in this movie. Uh, it is The Grudge. Indeed. Yes. Uh, you, From memory, now again, I haven't seen this movie in probably 10 years, um, you don't, like, you can go into this not knowing anything about, like, the Japanese version or anything. Mm. It's very much its own thing. More, like, it's, well, it's made by the same director, I believe. But, um... Uh. Uh, I think this will be fun. It has a pretty good cast. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun, Dave. You know, for installing Nightmare Fuel and Sleepless Nights. I think that you're thinking this movie is going to be scarier than I remember it being. Mm, well, again, suppose the case. The one hand is the imagery and other particular th stuff that they could supposedly do. And the other side of it is the psychological horror of it. I remember this movie being a lot of jump scares, but not much else. Oh, joy! Just what I need. And especially with the Freddy Fazbear's uh, live-action movie coming out at some particular point in time. Just the what? what everybody needs to be flippin' jump-scared. The what movie? Uh, the Freddy Fazbear's uh, movie based off of the old PC game a couple years back that's a franchise now. Oh, um, oh, what's it called? Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's, that's the one. When does that come out? When does that come out? Because I kind of want to see it, even though I know it probably won't be very good. Uh... I kind of just see it, and it's like, <laughs> this is a live-action movie of the trailer of the first game. <laughs> October twenty seventh. So I will I will have to go make a, make a point of, of seeing that. I wish you the best of luck, despite the fact that you're probably gonna drag me along. Nah, I mean if you want to go, you're invited, but you don't like I'm not gonna hold a gun to your head or anything. Clearly noted. Definitely better in most other cases, because you usually do. That's true. Anyway, so uh, until next time, I'm Paul. And I'm Dave.